that sucked. Hey everybody and thank you for watching another video. My name is Merge and welcome to the Breaking Bad What If series that I call the Heisenverse. A series where I make a change somewhere in the Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul timeline and explore how that one change ripples throughout the entire universe. And in this video we take an unusual turn down bad choice road because I'm about to bring some life to an idea that I've been thinking about since I started this channel. And that's this one clip of Hank turning out to be alive and now seemingly bulletproof which... okay. But how would things turn out with Hank back in the picture? Well, in order to make this story somewhat believable, there will be certain details that I just want you to go with me on, because it's not so much about the journey as it is about the destination. And before we get started, if you could leave a like on this video to support the channel, I'd appreciate it. Now, let's get into it. After Jack and his crew drives away with Walter's money, Hank's car, and Jesse's Jesse, Walter is left standing alone in the desert watching them leave. He then gets in his car unable to even look at himself in the mirror before driving off as well. No words? No music, just the eerie sound of wind blowing. But at the former cook site, when the dust finally settles and the sun is at its peak, there will be some movement on the ground, when out of nowhere, bursting out from the dirt, wielding the middle finger of justice, would be Hank Schrader, back from the dead, who slowly starts digging himself out the dirt, and he says to himself, Boy, that sucked. And once completely out the ground, Hank dusts himself off and he would pull a mineral out of his pocket which actually turns out to be a chunk of Walter's blue meth which is now glowing yellow due to Hank's blood, kinda like an infinity stone, but please, try not to think too hard about that part. But Hank being Hank only acknowledges the fact that he's back from the dead with this one liner saying, <laughs> and Marie says they're rocks. He then kneels down to bury it with Steve Gomez in the hopes that whatever this did to Hank could also be done for his fallen partner. He would then lay his hand flat on the dirt and says, Gomi, I hope this works. And before he walks away, Hank pulls out the now crushed bullet from his head and he looks unimpressed before flicking it away. And as he starts a long trip back into town, Hank begins to formulate a plan on how he can use his death to his advantage. And while that's going on, just to have a cohesive timeline, Walter has already let it be known to his family that Hank is gone. And after kidnapping Holly, the house is now filled with agents, including Marie just waiting for Walter to call, leaving her house virtually unguarded. And Hank finally making it home while that's going on would sneak into his house unnoticed to gather all the evidence tapes that he made with Jesse. And he also gets the gun that he keeps in his bedroom dresser drawer. But on his way out, he hears glass breaking and some commotion going on inside his house. And Hank thinking on his feet would quickly hide behind cover, hugging the wall with a gun in his hand. And when poking his head around the corner, he notices that his Jack and his crew ransacking his house as if though they're looking for something in particular. And Hank being outnumbered and imagining that they're also there for the evidence as well, would be forced to just watch the gang destroy his home while he remains behind the closed door of his bedroom, still with the gun in hand just in case they decide to search his room, but they never do. And when they leave, only taking some tripods and blank tapes, Hank would dial 911 and just leave the phone on the countertop with the hopes of bringing the police over. And Hank leaves out the back door with the evidence that he needs to put his plan in motion. A few hours pass and Hank was able to lie low at an abandoned safe house, likely the same one that he had Huel at. And after getting his hands on a police scanner from, well, that's not important. But after listening for a few hours, he'd be caught up as to what's going on with his brother-in-law. And Hank would know that Holly was found inside of a fire truck unharmed and that there's a nationwide manhunt going on for Walter White, Jesse Pinkman, and Saul Goodman right now. And thinking strategically, Hank would have those tapes anonymously dropped off at the station in the hopes to at least put some attention on Todd and Jack. And with the police grasping at straws for any leads on Walter, they would take and use the evidence of Jesse's confession to at least get a warrant for Todd. Because it may be a stretch, but what Jesse said on tape not only mentions Walter's business with Gus, but also the train heist, which includes Todd killing Drew Sharp. This is Todd Elquist we're talking about? So when the cops arrive at the compound, just as you can imagine, Jack and his crew don't exactly come quietly. And thinking that the cops are there for what happened with Hank and Steve Gomez, a full-on firefight between the APD and the neo-Nazis happened in the middle of the afternoon, exchanging shots, hitting squad cars, and firing through walls, and for the next few minutes it would be a complete war zone. And when the shooting finally stops, there would be a few fallen officers that didn't make it through, but Todd, Mustache Guy, and the rest of the gang would all be dead when the officers investigate further. It would only be dear old Uncle Jack who would be barely alive leaning against the couch bleeding from a gunshot wound to the chest. And the police surround Jack and they warn him not to move, but Jack coughing up blood would just ignore the officers saying, Wait! <coughs> Wait, damn it! And he reaches for a cigarette that's right next to a gun, and with him not complying, a single gunshot will be heard outside the house, putting an end to the supremacist group. And when the officers investigate the property further, after removing a blue tarp, they find Jesse Pinkman at the bottom of a concrete cage, beaten, bloodied, and chained up. A discovery that brings a lot more weight to the evidence that was just anonymously dropped off at the station. 
And miles away, Hank would still be in the safe house listening to the police scanner and he breathes a sigh of relief that Jack and his crew would no longer be an issue. But in that same breath, hearing that Jesse was caged like an animal and at the mercy of these psychopaths, it makes Hank want to do more to help him. But right now, he has his sights set on a bigger catch. So unfortunately for Jesse, he would just go from one cage to another. Because although he's cooperative and the victim, that doesn't change the fact that he's a drug dealing murderer who was associated with a man who's the subject of a nationwide manhunt. So maybe Jesse gets clemency considering the circumstances, but only time will tell. A few months passed and after a long drawn out court battle, Jesse Pinkman was given 7 years for his crimes in a minimum security prison, which is the best he could have hoped for because if someone has to go down for that blue sky meth empire, that would be the ideal sentence. Seven and a half years at FCI Butner Low, North Carolina, Wing D. It's the only federal institution with a golf program. But even after Jesse's hauled out to prison, after all this time, both Walter White and Saul Goodman still remain unseen. Some people even believe that they're dead, but if anyone's gonna throw the concept of death out the window, that's gonna be Hank. Not even thinking for a second that Walter would die without at least having a proper goodbye for his family. Or at least, that's what his instincts are telling him. So after all this time, every day for months, Hank would be in one of two places, either in the safe house listening to the police scanner, or somewhere out in the distance watching Skyler's house. And that time has finally paid off because he looks through his binoculars and he spots a familiar looking man entering Skyler's house. A man resembling his brother-in-law, but different. He has hair, a beard, and an oh so familiar beige coat. And Hank watches in anticipation for the man to leave. But then, he spots another familiar looking man approaching Skyler's front door. And Hank can only say one word. Gomi? As he lowers the binoculars looking in disbelief, then putting them back to his eyes. And he sees Gomez knock on the door, but he gets no response. And strangely enough, he just walks away. And Hank gets up to head towards his partner, happy to see that he's alive and wondering what he's even doing here. So as Hank heads towards the back of some empty houses, he sees Gomez sneaking up behind the same guy he saw earlier entering Skyler's house. And even with his back turned, he can just tell that it's Walt and he sees him looking through the window. And after a school bus passes, it becomes clear to Hank that Walter's back to see his family just as he predicted. And as he sees Walter Jr get off the bus and enter the house, Hank would then yell with his gun drawn. Surprising both Walter and Gomez who says turning around with a smile, Hank you bald son of a bitch you're alive. And Hank gets closer still with the gun pointed at Walter and he shakes hands with Gomez saying, good to have you back Gomi. And Gomez says in a semi-serious tone, yeah not the word I would use but let's talk about that later. He says directing his attention at Walter who's standing in front of the two agents with his hands to his side with a look on his face that's still processing what's going on. It's a look that's somewhere between disbelief and terror, especially seeing the fact that he watched them die. And Hank says with a smile, pulling out some handcuffs, Now, nah, Walt, where were we? And still with that same look on his face, Walter slowly reaches into his pockets, but Gomez would yell with his gun also drawn, saying, Hey, keep your hands where I can see them, Walter. But his request falls on death ears as he sticks his hands into his pockets. Walt, this is your final warning. Hands up, slowly, because dead or alive, you're coming with me. Hank says, stepping closer with his gun still drawn, and Walter says with a straight face, do it. Do it. You want, this. You want this. And he quickly pulls out and throws his car keys at Hank, surprising him. And with his finger already on the trigger, both Hank and Gomez would each fire a shot, dropping Walter where he stands. And the gunshots might as well have been heard around the world because within seconds, the scene is crowded with neighbors, police, and news broadcasters. Not to mention Skylar Marie and Walter Jr., who, as you can imagine, are experiencing a multitude of different emotions right now with Hank being alive and Walter being dead. But the one emotion that everyone is feeling is just relief that it's all over. And they turn their attention towards Hank and Gomez, who are struggling to find an answer to the question of how are they even alive? And Gomez would pull out the Infinity Stone-like cluster of meth and says, I think it has something to do with this. And Marie says, a rock? And in unison, almost as if though it were planned, both Hank and Gomez say, They're minerals! Jesus, Marie! But all in all, everything seemed like it's finally getting back to normal. Granted, no one can explain for the whole Hank and Gomez being alive situation, but that's not important. Yet. And with Walter being dead and Jesse behind bars, people have all but forgotten about the criminal lawyer himself, Saul Goodman. And when he learns of his former partner's fates, plus being discovered by Jeff, he would choose to relocate again with the help of Ed to disappear, and Gene would be given a new identity. But while in transit to his new location, very similar to The Last of Us, there would be a sudden zombie outbreak that happens out of nowhere, causing chaos and panic in the streets. And while maneuvering around people in wrecked cars, Ed turns on the radio to hear that there may be a connection between the blue sky meth and human blood, which could have originated from the two hero DEA agents that killed Walter White. And Gene says, is this, is this real? Zombies? Like like actual zombies? And they came from, from meth? What's, what's going on? Ed replies saying, if that's the case, maybe your former partner may have some input. What, like a prison break? Are you out of your mind? What could Jesse have an input on in this situation? 
Gene says shutting down Ed's idea to listen closer to the radio, but without taking his eyes off the road, he says, no, your other partner. He says pulling into a gated off area. Again, think Last of Us. And Gene looks at Ed with a look of bewilderment saying, I don't know if you haven't been watching the news or maybe you're just partially deaf, but Walter White is dead, so I doubt his input would even matter at this point. And while putting the kidney bean shaped van in park, Ed pulls out the glowing chunk of meth saying, this was your partner's input. And while looking at the glowing rock, then back at Ed, everything clicks for Gene. And he says nervously while looking around, where, where, where are we? Just follow me, please. Ed says, getting out the van. And they enter what seems like a house on the outside, but on the inside, Gene comes to find out that it's actually a makeshift prison. And he's instructed to leave his bags at the entrance while he gets the tour of the place. And when they step in front of a cell, Gene is just lost for words at who he sees in front of him, only saying the word, how? And the person that he's looking at turns out to be Walter White, alive and well, looking slightly different with an outgrown beard. And Walter, just as surprised as he saw, just says to him, <coughs> I told you, you're done. When I say you're done. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope you enjoyed another story from the Heisenverse. And I know with this one I took a step away from my usual takes because I wanted to have some fun and entertain the idea of what a potential crossover would even look like. And since I have no knowledge of The Walking Dead, I just figured that The Last of Us would be a valid swap. But that's just me. But now I want to hear from you guys. What did you think of this version of Breaking Bad? Did you like it? Hate it? Good? Bad? Whatever it is, let me know down below in the comments. And I cannot forget about the members of the Heisenverse. Thank you so much guys for supporting the channel. It truly means the world to me. And if you're interested in becoming a member and having your name immortalized in the next Heisenverse video, well, now's the best time to join. But if you're tight on money, I got you. I'll go ahead and link my Discord link down below so you can be a part of the conversation. But that'll do it for me on this video, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching another video. And until next time, my name is Merge. Later.